So we're going to jump into yet again another Patreon listener question for the Transformer Slag Podcast. Once again, if you are interested in being part of the Transformer Slag Podcast, patreon.com forward slash protoman. Check the description below. Check the comments. You'll find your way there. And you can get some cool stuff. Have your name put in the end segment of the credits as well as in the description. Get special Discord access. access, Not just the regular Discord. The special Discord has all kinds of cool stuff. Behind the scenes stuff. Extra Transformer content. A lot of cool stuff that you'll just never find on the internet, really. Merch gifts in the mail past a certain tier. And of course, like I mentioned, the Patreon listener question. We got one today from the legendary JM Autobot, and he would like to know, Hey Proto, as a kid, I didn't have access to the Transformers cartoon because we had a bad television reception. This made me rely on reading the tech specs to fill in my imagination with the likeness of characters and act out stories based on their abilities, personalities, weaknesses, and types of firepower. I've always loved the detail in tech specs, and I believe you mentioned that you worked on writing several tech specs, and I wonder if you were willing to talk about the history of these over the years and the process and perhaps others used to create these characters and bring Transformer characters to life for everyone. Thanks again for everything. Well, thank you, JM Autobot. Um, well, we'll start with the history part. Like, it, it's so sad because, yeah, I did work professionally doing tech specs with Transformers, and and writing material and it's kind of a lost art right now like the way that like specifically Earthrise, um the way cyberverse is now you kind of like in the case of like i'm just gonna reach over here and grab i have a Earthrise box and then let me grab a cyberverse box now when you look at the back of like your average deluxe cyberverse the only thing you're going to get is the name of the character and their function and the function is probably the only thing you'd be able to pull from today in terms of originality because it'll be like you know windblade city speaker okay well i guess she's a city speaker or at least with transformers you know function was just one of the many things a tech spec would give you to to flesh out the character and in the case of like earthrise and stuff because it's pre-established in general pre-established characters uh i guess they just felt there's no need for like a tech spec but what sucks is then when you get to like newer characters from Earthrise, like give an example like slither fang you know one of the uh the battle masters and stuff like that or the uh the the lower price point kind of stuff and no profile no tech spec no nothing so it, it's kind of unfortunate that we've lost that but it kind of has been back and forth throughout the years. Like, we had these amazing tech specs from 1984 up until the end of, uh, ni- you know, Generation 1, pretty much, and even kind of evolved throughout the years where, like, the Action, Max- Action Master tech specs even had even more information on the back of the card. And then, you know, Beast Wars kind of continued that tradition, and so did Beast Machines, but when we got into the Unicron trilogy... That's where they kind of went, "Mm, you know, we're going to give you a sticker and we'll give you a comic instead. So we'll flesh out the story through the comic that's included uh, instead, which, again, no problem. You know, Dreamwave was doing their thing. They had a Dreamwave. uh, They had a Dreamwave comic book and they kind of made up for it because you're like, I think two years into it, they did the Transformers Armada uh, More Than Meets the Eye guidebook from Dreamwave, which fleshed out every single character and their story. And also at the same time, there was a Fleer trading card series for Armada that also individually fleshed out everybody. So while it wasn't on the packaging, it still was somewhere to be found, at least in some shape or form. And unfortunately, like, you know, in the case of Energon, it was just completely lacking. They gave us a a tech spec uh, trading card, which uh, gave us a readout of their powers and abilities. But again, no actual you know character development or fleshing out in text itself so certain characters like let's say um let me think of one i'm just gonna turn my head and like sharkticon you know never really got any explanation really uh straight off of the packaging and stuff like that and because of the short-lived nature of the comic book by dreamwave we you know we never learned about much of that about that character now when you go into cybertron that's when tech specs not only made a return and the bios made a return, but 
Uh, it's actually one of the first times that it made me want to buy a character even more myself from a personal experience. I remember Aaron Archer mentioned around that time that whenever they would do a repaint of a character of a mold, uh, they'd like to make it switch a faction. So if a character like Undermind uh, is a Decepticon in the Cybertron toy line, his repaint will be an Autobot and we'll call him Repugnus. And I remember like reading you know, the bio of Repugnus on the back and again, the Cybertron bios don't sleep on those a lot of them are really good because there's a lot of non-show characters that got toys and those bios are pretty fleshed out whoever worked on those credit to them and like i remember even repugnus repugnus was like he's supposed to be this like uh this uh, rebellion that's happening on the beast planet against scourge and he's kind of like the leader of that rebellion he, he hails from the swamps while scourge hails from like the better regions and so all of a sudden this little undermine repaint this this regular you know basic scale figure that should be nothing all of a sudden has all this weight to him that he's an interesting character and it also goes to like even if i go back for a moment to armada where the character of dulor which was just this one of the many mini cons and all of a sudden like because of the comics and his bios he's supposed to be this leader of a mini con resistance and stuff like that kind of a bad guy in a sense but um, still, he was like a leader character among the Minicons when you would kind of just associate that with, let's say, Sparkplug or or even that of uh, Overrun, you know. So it's um, pretty cool, pretty cool. And, and again, you know, slowly started to disappear in the modern era. Like f the movie toys kind of gave us some, some good uh, tech specs, but even those, as time progressed, they started to phase those out with Dark of the Moon moving forward and everything, and it's just kind of par for the course today. They're, it's kind of a lost art, and we really actually don't see that kind of stuff outside of pretty much like exclusives. You know, like when Bacon was still kicking in 2016, and and the the gen, the generation of the tech spec has been kind of phased out. Bacon was still doing it. I remember. Um, I think it was 2011, because all the animated toys didn't have full fleshed out bios, they made a gigantic lithograph at Bacon with all the characters and all their fleshed out bios so that you could kind of have something for your characters. And it was this giant poster with like everybody, even the shattered glass characters and stuff. Like it was, it was pretty incredible. So it shows that, you know, there was there was a love for the art of storytelling with Bacon, and that's where I actually got my first gig writing official bios and stuff before I moved on to like the more mainstream, uh, well, I guess we'll call it the mass retail stuff, which was one of my first gigs, and we'll get now into my process and how I did everything was, I was, the first gig I ever got was Zap Trap, which was one of the Bacon free figure exclusives. And I was asked to write a bio and then asked to write a full, like the, I guess we'll call it the more than meets the eye bio or whatever you want to call it, the Transformers Universe Marvel bios, which are like the full bios, which have like a nice meaty story, a weakness section, and then like a weapons and ability section along with the full tech spec itself, the function. And that was my first time ever having to really do that professionally after years of doing it from a, a fan fiction kind of standpoint. And the process, how I would go about it, is if it was a pre-established character and I knew that there was going to be some kind of fiction accompanying it, whether it be a comic book or, or an animation, I'd want to know what's going on in that animation. That way, whatever I write will be in synergy with that of the animation. I don't want to write that a character has a sword and then in the animation or in the comic they have a gun. You know, like I want to really, you know, play that up. And uh, that's happened many times in Transformers lore where, you know, they say it's one thing and then it ends up being another. So I kind of wanted to not make those mistakes of the past. And the second thing is if it's something where there is going to be no story, there's going to be nothing, you could just be creative. Then I do what's called top, top down creativity, which is you really focus on that toy. You really look at the toy, you look at the sculpting, you look at the detailing. You know, is there anything you could pull from for weaknesses? Is there anything you could pull from from abilities? And sometimes uh, you could just be a little clever. And in the case of Zap Trap uh, and how he was going to kind of be part of like the Die Clone storyline and stuff like that and have that tie to it and that history, I kind of pulled a little bit from that, even though the Zap Trap character really wasn't too much of a pre-existing character. Yeah, there was an e-hobby repaint uh, 
in its in its like lineage, if you will. But really, there wasn't anything too established. So I kind of just wrote up this whole original story based pr- primarily around an old Diaclone commercial, and then wrote that character around that, and then applied a little bit of. Uh, of just looking at the sculpt and going, okay, we could do this, we could do that. Just a little fun stuff here and there. And uh, that ended up with the toy. And then I'm trying to remember which issue I'm trying to, because I have some of the creative stuff near me. I think it was issue number 11 of the Transformers Timelines comic book. It got reprinted in the back of the retail version, which you could have bought for in comic book stores by Diamond Distributing. So uh, yeah, that's uh, one way I went about it. But then when... I did pre-established characters. Best example, all the Beast Wars stuff. BotCon 2016, Beast Wars characters, whether it be Tigatron, Ravage, Tarantulas, uh, you know, those characters, when you jump into those, you pretty much have a very, you know, specific thing that you have to go about. When it comes to storytelling, because it was a pre prequel kind of story, uh, you just kind of want to tell little nuggets here and there that uh, we didn't know about the characters beforehand. So because, you know, the way I tackled Tigatron, because of pre-established notions of his samurai kind of demeanor and lone wolf kind of nature that's written in there. But then you look at the toy itself and the pre-established media, which would be the Bakon comic book and how he's going to be depicted there. You apply that to the weapons that he comes with and what it, what it's supposed to do. And uh, the weaknesses, again already pre-established weaknesses that are known to us as fans of the Beast Wars cartoon and everything. So little things here and there, very easy. I know that when I did uh, Tarantulas' bio, I really wanted to hammer home that he's Unicronian in origin and not just, you know, something that's been, you know, played with lightly uh, in the Beast Wars cartoon and in previous fiction and stuff. I wanted to really hammer it home because someone's got to say it. (laughs) So I figured it might as well be me. And uh, I've always felt that he always was kind of Unicronian because of his uh, transmetal mode, which uh, had these little like Unicron kind of horns on his head. So I, I always felt that that kind of like when he got transmetaled, uh, kind of like revealed his true nature in so many different ways. Not to mention, you know, hindsight being 2020, he turns into a motorcycle and years later you have Armada and here's, you know, sideways character with kind of horns for a head because of the legs of the headmaster gimmick and turns into a purple motorcycle hmm hmm <laughs> you know again hindsight's 2020 but it, it, that's just the way that i've always seen it so that's another example of that and then the last one being when i worked on combiner wars molds uh it's kind of the same thing all of those were pre-established characters so you're pretty much playing within that bubble where you're trying to keep it simple and just go like, okay, yeah, this character is X, Y, Z, you know, this character is like this or that, uh, whether it be, uh, you know, a Lyo Kaiser character or a swindle, you just got to kind of stick with those beats. And what kind of sucked about that funny story was, you know, when you write those bios, uh, they're fully fleshed out and released in America on the American English packaging when those were brought to Canada (laughs) and we have trilingual packaging. uh, So those bios were severely uh, cut in half. So when you flip it over and go, yeah, I wrote this. And then it's like just one line, like you can't trust swindle. And it's like, (laughs) oh, that's a waste. So, but yeah, it's, 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 it's a very interesting process. Um, The only other unique story, and I've told this story before is that of the naming conventions of characters, which is sometimes you have characters where there actually isn't a name at all for them. And the best example of that that I got to work on was that of the character of Flash Century. Now, Flash Century was the golden ticket exclusive figure uh, for BotCon 2016, and it's actually the only figure that I've ever worked on that I still don't own a figure of. Um, they just, it was too limited, the numbers, because it was the golden ticket figure, so I just never got one, you know, and I remember, like, here's this, it's going to be a, per- like, all we knew was, it's going to be a purple repaint of the reflector mold, that's all we knew, 
Um, I wrote the story, you know, explaining that it's going to be, you know, why was there so many reflector, you know, animation errors in the Generation 1 cartoon, specifically the first three episodes? Why does he not appear anymore after the 86 movie? Pretty much fleshed all that out, making sense of it, explaining the story of the photons and how Reflector was able to, you know, build an army. And that's why he was recruited into the Decepticons, because they needed to bolster their ranks to go up against the Autobots, which when you look at the original 1984 toy line, you're talking like, I think it's 18 Autobots to like seven Decepticon toys, pretty much. If you don't count like, you know, if you don't flesh it out with more cassettes and stuff like that and, and 1985 toy line characters like Shockwave and, and a couple others. So it's it's something where I was like, okay, we could kind of you know flesh out that story a little bit, the early Decepticon War and how he needed more you know people, and and Flash Century was just one of those. But when it came to naming the character, when you ha- when you name a character with the, within the ha- the Hasbro bubble of tech specs, you have to use trademarked names, and this always comes to that whole topic that I always bring up with people about how trademarks are so important for figuring out what they're going to be putting out. But so they're like, well, if you're going to name this character, you got to use a trademark we already have. And so you you go through all the trademarks and you just got to find something that sounds appropriate. You know, you're not going to attach, you know, the, the trademark of Beachcomber, you know, to a uh, to a reflector mold that's supposed to be a Decepticon character. Uh, but at the same time, you also don't want to use a, a pre-established name within the Transformers lore that people already associate with. So you start diving into trademarks that Hasbro owns from G.I. Joe, from, you know, from all these other kind of brands. And then here's this one trademark called Flash Century. Wow, Flash Century, Flash like a camera, Century like a protector or, you know, a warrior. OK, that works fine. Years later, you don't realize that uh, it was actually a My Little Pony character, <laughs> and that's where the trademark came from. But the point being is that that's that's all how that process works on the professional side of it. When you when you're ma- writing your own bios, you could do whatever you want. But with Hasbro, you really got to when you have a character that doesn't have a name yet, you got to use something that's w- within that bubble. And it, I go all the way back to what I was saying with Undermine from Cybertron. He got his repaint that was an Autobot. I'm pretty sure whatever you know they, whatever they were going to name him, it had to be something within the trademarks. So they threw repugnance on him. That I think at that point was uh, the last time they did a toy with that trademark. It was a Universe 1.0 repaint from a, uh, a Beast Wars character. I think that was the last time. But yeah, so it's just it, um, it just shows how that process works too, is that you know they have to have names that are trademarked. It's, that's just par for the course. goes back to what I, the segment I literally just did uh, yesterday talking about the Viacon uh, breakdown thing where those are two trademarks that are up as of 2020 and they have to be you know renewed so here we go so yeah that that that's more or less that you know i hope that kind of answers your question a little bit I, there the again the process of, of tech spec creation is really just that of creativity and having fun and and it, again the toy comes first and the creative comes afterwards so you have to really look at the toy deeply and and go like okay this character has two missile launchers be sure to mention that you know this character has a sword be mentioned that oh this character has like a a gun that's assemblable maybe you know there's something you could write in about that oh you know mold it on the back of the the spoiler it looks like there's these two little boosters it's not detachable it's just molded into the plastic maybe you can mention that and how that makes them faster or something you know if it's a car it's fast if it's you know if it's a, a tank it's slower you know it's more about armor just the basic writing tropes that could exist or if you want to really be outside of the box and do, you know, really creative stuff, like how they were able to take Undermine and Repugnus and be them two separate characters, despite the fact that they're cast from the same mold. So it's, there's all kinds of little things you could do there. But yeah, I hope that that kind of lets you know, uh, JM Autobot. I, you know, it's it, I, I love writing tech specs, and I still do it to this day. A lot of the, the previous TFCon exclusives and stuff like that, I've written the full bios and stuff, or for the custom class and stuff like that. So it's, it's all kicking around. And uh, what I love is that the Japanese audience, they, when they get their hands on them, they translate them and they put it on Twitter for the Japanese audience to read. And I really appreciate that kind of stuff, too. It's kind of cool that there's still people reading and enjoying what I do. Uh, but yeah. Hope that uh, hope that helps a little bit. And once again, if you are interested in being part of the Transformer Slag Patreon, like the legendary JM Autobot over here, uh, just 
check the description below, check the comments, there'll be a link, or just go to patreon.com forward slash protoman and uh, get in on the action.